Hi friends, I am so excited about this video today. We have some great, delicious, easy game day appetizers. So first, let's get into these jalapeno popper wonton cups. And by the way, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Amanda. I do what's for dinner videos and all kinds of yummy recipes. So if you like content like that, make sure that you join my YouTube family. I'd love to have you a part of it. Just hit that subscribe button. And let's go ahead and get to making these wontons here. So as you can see, I've got the wonton wrappers and I'm just brushing them with some melted butter and putting them in a pan. Now, I will tell you that I only made six of these. I knew that the majority of my family would not eat these, but they sounded so delicious. I knew that probably just me and my daughter that would like these. So I made a smaller batch of them. So this recipe is very easy to adjust to your needs. Same even goes for ingredients because I actually was out of something and had to make a substitution and that worked fine. So I've, once I get all these in the pan, we're actually going to pre-bake these just to kind of like crisp them up. I actually make another recipe that uses wonton wrappers. They're a taco cup. I need to make those soon and show those to y'all. They're really good. But we've never pre-baked those. I was very impressed with how this turned out with pre-baking pre them. So we may do that again in the future for those as well. So that's just going to go into a 350 degree oven. You're going to bake them for about seven minutes. I think actually I checked them at five and I want to say they were pretty, pretty done at that point. So just keep an eye on them. You don't want to get them overdone. So this is my substitution. It actually called for green onions. I know I bought some at the store, but I could not find them in my refrigerator. I don't know what happened to them, but I thought, okay, well, onion would probably work fine. It's a little different taste, but just regular onion would, you know, will be fine. And so I've got some mozzarella cheese going in there and some cheddar cheese and some cream cheese. And then I'm also going to dice up two jalapenos. Now the recipe said three ounces because I kind of changed the, um, the measurements for it to make a different amount. And so it gave me three ounces. I wasn't really sure how much that was for sure, but I thought, well, I'm going to cut two up and then I'll kind of, you know, gauge it as I put them in there, how much that ends up being. So obviously with this, you could add as much or as little as you like. So if you, um, you know, want more in there, definitely do that if you want less. If you want it hotter, you could leave the seeds in there because I'll be honest with you, this turned out very mild. I was pleased with that because I don't do well with spicy. But um, if you want it spicier, you may want to add some hot sauce or keep the seeds in there or something like that to increase the heat. Now the recipe online also mentions you could use, um, or I think it was in the comments, but it said that you could use the pickled jalapenos. And I do think they have varying levels of spice on those too. So that would also be an alternative if you'd like to do this. You know, I like that if, if the jalapenos aren't spicy, I like the flavor that they give. But when they get really hot, then, cause, and I was very nervous about these being hot since there was so much in there, but they were great. So it was, it really worked out fine. So just add however many you'd like to add to the bowl. You know, like I said, you know, use more or less depending on how you'd like that. And then we're going to combine that really well and get it all mixed together. And then we're going to spoon that into our pre-baked wonton cups. And at first I thought, that looks like that's not going to be enough. But it actually was a perfect amount. So I was really glad that worked out. So I'm just getting that scooped into these cups. And you can see they're pretty good and solid. So I was really, like I said, impressed with the whole pre-baking because even though we like the taco cups we make, they do have like a little bit of, say, say almost like a little chewy because they don't get all crisp because you put the filling in there with them. So pre-baking them is definitely key if you want that crunch to it. And these were, were really good on that. So I'm just adding a little bit of cheddar cheese to the top. And then we're going to bake these in a 350 degree oven for about 12 to 14 minutes or until the cheese is melted and the wonton is browned. Again, keep an eye on them. You definitely don't want them getting overdone and getting burnt but these were amazing we loved them highly recommend this recipe if you like like the jalapeno poppers if you like cheese if you don't like cheese you're not gonna like this recipe probably but we really like these a lot um i will definitely make them again and i think you could even add chicken to this if you wanted to and that would be delicious as well i may try that next time because i think that would go well so next up we have pepperoni bread i pick come in the parentheses semi homemade hot pockets because to me this is almost what this reminds me of this is actually my mother-in-law's recipe she fixes it a lot of times um around christmas and stuff like that so 
we really enjoy this recipe so basically you've just got so i use two cans of crescent rolls you can make as many or as little of these as you want one can will make four of the pizza rolls and then you'll get four out of every can so once you unroll those you're going to keep two of those rectangles together and then kind of um, i use my little pampered chef roller tool to make sure i rolled out the dough and sealed up that seam you're just going to layer them with pepperoni with mozzarella cheese and a little bit of parmesan cheese and this is so customizable you could you know if you don't like pepperoni you could use other things you could do ham all kinds of stuff so this is definitely a situation where you could you know make it your own very easily you're just going to seal them up the best you can i didn't do a great job on that first one this was the first time i'd made these and so i got a little better as i went through and done some of them and you know you can put as much pepperoni in there or as little as you like because i did you know put a lot on that first one and then my husband was like let's put a little less on some of them so here they are out of the oven you're going to bake these at 350 degrees until they're golden brown and done to your liking. I'll put that recipe down in the description box. I always stick the recipes down there. So if y'all ever need those, they will be in the description box. And we just serve these with some pizza sauce that we heat up. And you could very easily cut these into like fours and be able to like divvy them up and have several of them as an appetizer. And you can see my daughter's pulling that apart and dipping it in the sauce. And it just looks so delicious. These are so good. Highly recommend them. So next up, we have a cheese ball. This again is my mother-in-law's recipe. And we're gonna start with some cream cheese in that bowl and add a container of pimento cheese. And we're gonna get all that mixed together well. I do recommend a hand mixer for this. It just makes it much easier. Once you start getting it mixed together, it comes together so fast like that. So, and once you get that mixed together, we're gonna also add in some hot sauce, some garlic powder and some chopped nuts. Now, you can use as much of these as you want. It calls for a tablespoon of garlic powder and three or four drops of hot sauce. I only have that, um, the green kind, the jalapeno kind. I think it's supposed to be milder. I have to say, I got too much in there. <laughs> or for me, it was a little too spicy. My daughter absolutely loved it because she loves spicy. Yeah, I use chopped pecans, but you're welcome to use walnuts or whatever kind you'd like to use. We're just going to mix that up again just to make sure everything gets thoroughly distributed in there. And then we're actually going to cover this with some saran wrap and stick it in the refrigerator for about an hour. That gives it time to kind of solidify again. I actually went ahead and once I took it back out from, you know, that hour, I went ahead and re-refrigerated it again after I formed the ball just to make sure it was good and solid. I think I kept it overnight and then did it the next day. And that worked out fine. This cheese ball is so good. Like it's one of my most favorite um, cheese balls. I, well, I've not had a ton of homemade ones, but this is like my favorite. And I'm curious, do y'all have, have y'all made cheese balls? Is you know, do you have a favorite you know cheese ball recipe that you like to make? I'd love to see what that is in the comments. So like I said, I've got this all kind of for, trying to form it into that ball and getting it ready to put it in the refrigerator. Then we're going to chop up some nuts and get those ready to roll that in. I love using this chopper for stuff like that. It really works well. And it, it especially has, like I think in another video, I did it for eggs, things like that. It just really makes it a lot more handier. <laughs> and it keeps it kind of contained in that small area. Whereas sometimes when I try to do it with knives, especially with nuts, they tend to kind of go every which way. So I'm just rolling that around in those nuts to get it covered. Again, you know, you could use walnuts or whatever. I used the pecans for this, but... Um, it was a little tricky getting it all covered. I'm not sure what the trick is to that, but eventually I kind of got it all stuck in there because, you know, it kind of sticks into that cheese once you get it in there. It was just, it took me a little bit of time. But this cheese ball is so good. I highly recommend it. It's such an easy thing to make and to take to events or just to snack on for, you know, around the house, whatever you want to use it for. But definitely makes a great game day appetizer as well. Do y'all have any favorite appetizers? If so, let me know down in the comments. So this brownie batter dip, this is my first time making this. Oh my word, y'all, you have got to make this stuff. It was so good. And with those strawberries, it was absolutely perfect. So I'm just getting some cream cheese and butter and we're gonna cream that together. It said to, to beat it until fluffy about one to two minutes. I think it only took me about a minute. You know, again, you start with softened butter, softened cream cheese, and that'll definitely help that come together. 
Again, I would definitely recommend a hand mixer. It would be really difficult to do this by hand otherwise, but I'm sure it could be done. I've got some powdered sugar going in there. And I'm actually, you're not going to be able to see it here in a minute because uh, it was on the other side, but I added a couple tablespoons of milk. I did notice it seemed a little thick, so I added a little extra. It says in the recipe that you may need to add a little extra just to kind of get a consistency that you like it to be. So you're just going to mix all that together well. And once that comes together, you're actually going to add some brown sugar and cocoa powder and then vanilla to that and then mix that again really well and that's gonna you know get it to, it's very interesting because the texture has like a you can almost it almost tastes like a batter which would make sense since it's brownie batter dip but i guess that with the ingredients i wasn't really quite expecting that so be careful here because i really i turned the mixer too high and sit up sent up a, a whole big bunch of cocoa powder in there so make sure you don't turn your mixture up too high. And again, when you're mixing this part, if it starts getting too thick, you know, make sure you just add just a little bit of milk. I did that a time or two, just a, a, a small bit at a time, because you definitely can't take it back out once you've added it in. And you also may need to scrape down the bowl. I did that a time or two, just to make sure all that powder was, you know, incorporated well. Once you get that all mixed together, it's done. It's ready to be put in a serving container. We served it with strawberries, oh my goodness, and topped it with mini chocolate chips too. Guys, I'm serious. You gotta make this. If you love chocolate, if you love, you know, anything like that, make it. It is so good. And I'll definitely have that recipe linked below. You can serve it with, you know, pretzels, graham crackers, all kinds of great things. Thank y'all so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. I hope you have a blessed day wherever you are. See you in the next one.